Why do we perceive reality in such a spatial and temporal way? How is our brain interpreting the universe? Is the brain a receiver of consciousness? Or is consciousness a product of the brain? The all pervading power or the super consciousness is the one creating our human consciousness through the nervous system. The nervous system is the control center for the body. It has two main parts. The central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord. And the peripheral nervous system, which includes all the other nerves in the body. The nervous system works both under our control and on autopilot. Voluntary actions like clapping hands use the somatic nervous system. Involuntary actions like heartbeat are performed by the autonomic system. the autonomic nervous system comprises of two antagonistic sets of nerves the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems the sympathetic system controls the body during emergency situations also called fight or flight reactions when a fetus is between two and three months old the rays of the all-pervading power pass through the developing brain the human brain is shaped like a triangular pyramid or prisma like. When these rays fall on the developing brain, they get refracted into four different channels. These channels correspond to the four aspects of the nervous system. The rays of the all pervading power that enter through the apex of the pyramid brain pass straight down forming the central subtle channel these rays settle down in three and a half coils in the sacrum bone as the kundalini which is the residual consciousness of the divine within everyone The gross manifestation of this central channel is the parasympathetic nervous system. The rays that fall on the sides of the prism refract into opposite sides, similar to the way a light refracts through a prism. After refraction, the resultant ray splits into two components, according to the law of Beryl the gram of forces. The vertical components of the energy are channeled into the left and right subtle channels 
corresponding to the sympathetic nervous system. The remaining energy, the horizontal components, are projected outside, corresponding to the attention that goes to the outside world. It pushes its way out through the senses, dragging with it our attention to the past and to the future. The energy that flows out of the brain is the one that reacts to everything. The reactions gathered outside are brought back as conditionings called superego or as ego. In conclusion, the rays that pass through the apex form the parasympathetic system and the rays that fall on the sides form through the horizontal components the ego and superego and through the vertical components the sympathetic nervous system during childhood the calcification of the fontanelle bone takes place this separates an individual from the all-pervading power and develops a sense of individuality this sense of separation is created for humans to use the left and right channels to develop a balance the left channel is like a break and the right channel like the accelerator of a car by learning how to use them properly one develops a balance as a result of such activities the two balloons of the superego and ego are developed however when there is an imbalance, this ballooning goes beyond limits. Such overactivity in the outside world drains the sympathetic energy. and, ultimately, leads to disease. When the Kundalini rises, she draws the attention inside. As a result, conditionings and ego decrease and the sympathetic energy is replenished. The awakened Kundalini guides the human attention to the fontanelle bone. Here, the human attention becomes one with the all-pervading power. We have to realize that we are now the part and parcel of that cosmic consciousness itself, the Brahma, the one that creates 
which coordinates which plans into all the details and the one that loves through its creation through its expression is that cosmic consciousness we are not only in it but we can handle it we can regulate it we can use it we can work it out albert einstein also said a human being is a part of the whole called by us universe a part limited in time and space he experiences himself his thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness but what exactly is consciousness consciousness is seen as the relationship between the brain and deeper truths more fundamental than the physical world where is the seat of consciousness how can we solve this fundamental puzzle of our existence